Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the new iOS mobile app for Power Automate. And by iOS, I mean the Apple's iPhone app, which is available now in the App Store. Now, this new app became generally available on June 15th of 2023. So it's important that you understand what these new features are. So I'll walk you through what were some of the older designs and how they compare to the newer designs. And then we'll also go and deep dive into this new app feature altogether. Uh, and there are actually some differences that you wanna be aware of. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So here is the announcement of the refreshed Power Automate mobile app for iOS, which was made on June 15th of 2023. And as a side note, if you are a Android mobile app user, then that was the, its, its last release was made on August of 2022. And then here's the announcement. And if you wanna go ahead and get a little bit more information, you can just scroll down and click on this view documentation. And that takes you to this page, which talks to you about all the features over there, which I'll walk you through that. Now, what's interesting to note is if you go ahead and click on the App Store, and once you're in the App Store, you go ahead and search for Power Automate. That's all I'll do is Power Automate. I select the second one from the top. It'll actually go and show you the app. So you see the second one from the top, it says Power Automate. Now I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna click on the open button, but just click somewhere on the icon itself or on the name. So as I go click on it, uh, what you see right on the top, where it says what's new and there's a version history link, Go ahead and click on that version history link. And this is where you're actually able to see the version numbers of those new models or the upgrades that I received. And what I noticed, which is interesting, but if you scroll down a little bit, you see all the 2.3s. Those were the ones which were obviously over two years old, but they were the first iterations of it. And all the new experience, well, they started from the 3.0 model. So keep that up in the back of your mind is that now you know is that the earlier iterations of it, their version numbers were just 2.3 something something. You don't have to know exactly what it is, uh, but then when you start to see all these new features and functionalities coming in, well, they were a .3.01, there was a 3.01s. So it helps, um, especially if you're in the support side um, and then you know these tickets come in for whatever is the Power Automate mobile app related issue, uh, you can immediately ask right off the bat, say, hey, that app that you have can you just tell me what the version is and the moment you hear 2.3 something something you already know that they are using an older model which means it's in their best interest to go and upgrade it to a newer one something with the 3.0 this is a very important point that you need to be aware of okay so now i'm going to directly go inside power automate so i'm going to click on the power automate button and now you will see this new experience of the app that has opened up and right off the bat, I immediately noticed changes. Now remember, I'm comparing this with the original design. So right on the side, I'm actually putting in images of one of the first iterations of it. And you will notice that the header and the footer has completely changed. Now remember, I'm talking about this when I say early design is the two dot version ones, because some of the three dot version ones came out about a few weeks ago. Um, so this 3.1 is completely different from the 2.1 and the 2.1, I've shown you these images over here. Pretty neat. Overall, I'm still very happy with it. But let's actually deep dive a little bit on the header, the middle body section, and even on the footer area. So right over here on the, let's call it a home screen um, on the main center, you can see that we are able to see my cloud flows. And if I go ahead and click on the shared with me, it takes me to the shared flows. So I like that immediately I can go and say which is the difference between the ones that only I've created for myself as against the ones that I've shared with other people. Because remember, in the first iterations, all you saw were my flows. But let's keep continuing. Let's focus our attention now in the bottom, the footer section of it. And over here, I actually see the flows and the instant flows and the approvals, which is pretty neat. But previously, especially in the early iterations, what we saw was just the activity, my flows and settings. So I like this new feature and functionality that is available. So I'll go and click on the My Cloud Flows, and on the bottom, I'll just click on the Flow section. When I click on the Flow section, nothing happens, which means that the default screen that you're seeing, or the home screen that you're seeing, that's what it is. It's My Cloud Flows, and it's in the Flows over here. Uh, but if I go and now click on the Instant Flows, these are kind of the virtual button ones. And this really caught my attention because if you see in the image that I'm putting over here, the previous buttons, they were really big. They were like full circular shaped physical. They were really full. They were like, full, they were 
full circular shape virtual buttons. That's what we keep calling it. Uh, but over here now, the design has changed a little bit. Uh, I'm having a little mixed feelings about this. It's not something that is bad, uh, but at the same time, this is a change. So I just have to make sure that I now realize that, oh, this is not showing me different flows. These are actually the instant flows. So if I were to go and click the first one, which is built using new mobile app, if I just click on that, it will actually be behave like a button. And I will go and click on run the flow and the flow triggers off as against what we used to do before is just click on that virtual button and the flow will trigger off over here. And again, if you haven't used your Power Automate mobile app for a few months, and if you come over here, don't be surprised you haven't lost those virtual buttons. Those virtual buttons are all still over here. Uh, all you need to know is now click on the instant flows on the bottom. And then each of these, which used to be circular in shape, now actually behave as buttons. And over here also, you can go and see the My Cloud Flows buttons versus the ones that are shared with me versus the ones that are run only. All of those three options are still there as is. So that was for the instant flows. Let's switch gears and now talk about the approval. So again, in the footer section, you see the approvals area. So I'm gonna go and click on the approvals and right over here, you will see if there are any pending approvals. So your approvals can come in different places, directly on the Power Automate, on the website itself. It can come inside Teams and this is the other place that you have approvals. So you can go ahead and click on it. And this is the other place. So you can go and click on it and do the approve or go ahead and prove the reject. All happens directly inside the phone as before. So nothing to be concerned of over here as well. Now, I'm not seeing any approvals over here because this is my default environment. So I wanna switch over to an environment that I know I have some approvals. Well, how do I switch environments right now in this new mobile design? Well, on the top, do you see over there which looks like a global icon? I'll go and click on it and now it gives me a drop down of all my environments. So I'm actually gonna go and click on the Christian Family Dash Prod USA. It's the fourth one from the top. So as I click on it, it will now directly take me into that environment. And on the back, you see I actually have some of my approvals over here. So let's take a look at some of them. First of all, if I just click on the first one, just click on it, this is what I see. And this is something we are familiar with, right? This is the option where I can go and click on the approve, or I can go and click on and requesting more information, uh, or I can go and do a reject. Like all of this we are familiar with. So that functionality inside the mobile app still remains. And yes, you also have this request to go ahead and actually rate it. That also is still there. It has not gone away. Uh, right now, I'll just go and click on the not now right now. Uh, but then moment you finish the other, uh, uh, go and approve it. All you have now is two because originally you had three. One of them you went and approved it. Uh, but let's take a look a little bit more. See on the right side, you have this drop down. So what does the drop down do? When I click on the link over there, you see the drop down feature up here. So in this case, it can be, you know, not sure, call me, that has options available. The three dots that you see in between called the ellipses. If I go and click on those ellipses, I see more information. I see details, not sure, call me, approve. Again, the options for the three types of responses that you get for the approval, which in this case is not sure, call me and approve, they are all still there. Uh, you have the ellipses option, or you can go and just expand it or click on the drop down, and they appear. So I like that the overall approvals is still the same. There's not too many changes over there. It just has moved around a little bit in the new feature for the iOS app. It's on the bottom right, and that's basically what it is. Okay, so now I wanna spend the remaining amount of time just focusing on these flows. So on the bottom now, I left, I see flows. So if I go and click on it, you see all the flows that are tied to this environment. So again, if you wanna switch environments, you go and click on the globe icon, you will see the drop down, and you can go and change the environments, uh, or you can just select that environment. Other thing is that say, for example, you went ahead and created a new flow, and you are not able to see where the flow is over here, not a problem. On the top, you see the recycle type of an icon. You click on the recycle type of icon and it'll actually reload, which means it's pulling in fresh data from Power Automate from the cloud. And just in case if there's any changes, it will go ahead and do all of that available for you. Um, the flows itself, if I go and now select any one of them, you will actually go and see directly the details place. Now, previously, it actually directly took you inside the flow, which is fine, but over here, it takes you directly inside the details place. Now, my personal opinion about this is on a positive side because this behaves a lot like what is there on the actual cloud side when you go to the browser. Because when you click on, when you go to the browser, you go ahead and see a flow, you click on it, what it does is it doesn't take you directly inside the designing of the flow. It takes you to this main property section of the flow where you're able to see, okay, when it was created, modified, what type of flow it is, is it an automated one, um, you know, is, what is the plan? Like this flow runs on the owner's plan, 
enabling it, disabling it, the run history, connections, you know, this just gives you that side-by-side -side similarity if you are being so uh, used to it from the cloud desktop side and when you start adopting the Power Automate mobile side, that familiarity comes along with it. But, but if you want to actually see the design of the flow, there's two ways to do it. On the top, there is that pencil. So if you click on the pencil, that's gonna show you, get you into the edit mode. So you can actually go and see the flow directly as if you are building it from the design side and you can go and tweak it. So here you go, it is actually loading. And once it loads, it will show me all the steps, which in this case was just you know two steps with some conditions. If I click on the condition, it will go ahead and expand it. And then you can see all the other actions inside that. So that's basically the same. The other thing that I noticed was if I wanna go and see any of the run histories and how each of those actions and steps work, um, I come over here back to the properties page and I see the run history. I, by default, just naturally thought by clicking on any one of these succeeded ones would take me inside the run history, but it did not. Uh, all I have to do right now is I have to go and click on the all runs. Here it shows me the entire history of all the runs. And over here, if I go and click on the succeeded for any of them, it will take me directly inside and show me the details of that specific run. So the only change I noticed over here is that when you're in the main flow property page, the runs over there, that runs does not show you. The runs which was of the succeeded or failed, that doesn't show you. You have to first go inside to see all the runs and over there you go and click on them. Again, a little bit of subtle change over there. I know, is it a problem? Maybe. I wish it worked directly on the original property page, but at least I can go and find it by going and seeing inside all the runs and over there I select which one that I want. You also have the option, just like before, to go ahead and create your flow directly inside this mobile app. And that is why you see the plus icon on the bottom right. So if I click on the plus item right on the bottom right, now it has changed a little bit. What you see are these three options over here. It has changed a little bit. What you see are these two options. It's telling me, pick your path. So what do you wanna do? Do you wanna start with a template or do you wanna build your own? And again, from my personal standpoint, even though this is different from what we did before, I welcome this because this is very similar to what we see on the desktop side. Because on the desktop side, you and I know, we've got two options over there. We can go and build it from blank or we can go and use any of the existing templates. So if I click on the option on the top, which is start with templates, if I click on it, what it does is it takes me into this section to create a flow and it gives me some template options. This is right now it's asking me, hey, what do you want? Uh, you're creating a flow. Do you want to post from an MSN weather update, getting updates over there, taking it from the MSN update and put it in Yammer? Or do you want to go and do something with your email attachments that are coming in? Or I can keep scrolling down and it's basically saying, do you want something about this to custom actions for a selected file? On and on, there is plethora of templates available. And on the bottom, you've got the option to see more templates. All of those are also available. Now, if I go back one more step, if you did not want to use one of the templates, that's fine. Build your own. So I'll select the second option from the top, click on it. It takes me now directly to the section where now we can go and build our own flows. And this is what you're familiar with because over here, we want to first go ahead on the top where it says untitled, go ahead and give it a name. So I'll just give it a name like that. And then after that, uh, it does zoom in a little bit, which is something that's always been there on the mobile apps. It's nothing just to do with the Power Automate mobile apps in, in, in general. Click on the done, you can zoom outside and at least now you're able to see all the triggers that you want to start with. A popular one for this is the one which is the manual tr manually trigger a flow. When I click on it, it now goes and puts that in as my trigger. After that, I can go in and do a plus new step. The plus new step directly comes in and I can go and add more of my options over here. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and put in a compose for now. In the compose, I'll go and select the first compose option, click on the compose action itself, input, and I'll just put in some text. I'll say, hi, click on done, scroll down a little bit. Now you can see the save option and I'll click on save. So this flow is basically all built and complete, complete. And there it says flow created successfully. I'll click on okay. And now it goes ahead and takes me outside back to see all my cloud flows and see on the top, you see the name, that's the new one. And so in this time, you don't see that big virtual button, which is the circular shape. You just see with this one little row over here, but that's the one that we just created. And this is the new design of how you go and also create a flow directly inside the mobile app. The bell icon on the top right, if you go and select it, 
it takes you over to this notification section. And the notification by default will show you all the notifications, anything that you have to do with some flow errors or some flow statuses or even the approval ones of all of them, or it can show you directly from the flows or it can also go and show you the run status of existing flows, whether there was runs were any errors or there were any no errors, one of them. These are the ones that basically gives you the run status of all of them. That is basically the bell notification. It's not something that is notification directly coming from Microsoft or from a, say a message center or something like that. No, this is tied to your Power Automate and it gives you all different kinds of notification options over here. And finally, if you go and click on your profile icon on the top left, these settings you're already familiar with. It goes ahead and tells you what is your account information, whether you wanna sign out. You can go ahead and click on the manage account, which directly opens up another browser type access. Uh, so that's what I'll do is I'll just click on it and it directly takes you into some authentication that you wanna do, which I won't do that in this case. Um, and finally, you also have the settings. So if I click on the settings, these are the options that you have. So you can click on the learn and it'll actually give you some learning content. Um, it also goes and shows you, hey, from a privacy standpoint, do you want to send the usage data? You can toggle that on, you can toggle that off. I actually have it off by default. Those are the setting options that are available out of the box over here. So in closing, I will say that my reaction to the overall change of this Power Automate is on the positive side because now at least there is consistency between what I am seeing over here and what's on the cloud from the desktop side. Granted, what's on the instant flow section over here, what used to be virtual circular shape buttons have now basically gotten this power apps gallery effect altogether. And so my reaction over here is pretty neutral. I won't say that I like it, but at the same time, I don't hate it. I just got used to the previous one, so that's what my eye was looking for. But nonetheless, this thing does do the exact same thing, so I gladly accept this one as well. And then the overall status of how I can go ahead and change the environment so easily by just clicking on the top right as against me going and searching for it, that is very welcoming because as you and I know, environment and the count can actually grow and easily accessing it is so much more welcome by me. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.